Because Christ lives, we too shall live forever through faith in him. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our scripture lesson for this past Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. We're looking at Acts chapter 5, verses 12 and 17 to 32, especially looking at the end of the reading, verses 29 to 32, but I'll share the whole section with you so you get the whole, the whole story. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And now, especially this section, verses 29 to 32, Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. My dear friends in Christ, here we have a portion of the history of the early Christian church. And, and as we see this portion of history, well, what we see is that the word was working. The word was working. People were being reached with the gospel. The Holy Spirit was working on people's hearts. And well, Jesus had died to pay for the sins of people and, and the Holy Spirit was working on their hearts so that they believed that wonderful message. And as a result, well, the church was growing and, and the Jewish religious leaders were getting jealous because here were all these people who were getting interested in them and, and not so interested in them. And that's understandable because... The Jewish leaders largely were teaching a law message and, well, the Christian church was talking about Jesus our Savior. Such a wonderful message that gives hope, that gives joy. Well, what happened is that the Jewish leaders were filled with jealousy of the disciples just as they had been jealous of Jesus the Savior. And so the disciples were arrested, they were put in public jail, but then they were freed by that angel from the Lord. And the angel told the apostles, go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of this new life. And so 
they went and told the full message of the, this new life. They did as they were told, and as a result, well, they were brought back to the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. The high priest, he said to them, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Maybe something we don't think about, but those apostles, they had to be concerned about the high priest's message here, what he said. They knew that he was a Jewish religious government official, and they knew the fourth commandment, which says, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. They knew that that commandment was one that said that they were supposed to show honor and respect and, and obey the authorities that God placed over them in, well, homes and in, well, the places where there are authorities over us, home, school, work, government, all of those places are places where there are authorities that we will want to give honor and respect and, and obedience. Well, they could look at this and say, here were authorities God had placed over them, but they responded, we must obey God rather than men. Like the apostles, what we need to always remember is that we need to seek God's help so that we can keep the fourth commandment, so that we can show honor and respect to those who are in authority over us. But if it ever would happen that an authority over us would tell us to do what is contrary to God's word, we need to do just what the apostles did here. Say, we must obey God rather than men, especially when it comes to sharing the word of God with others, especially when it comes to sharing the word of God with others. Why? Well, Peter and the apostles, they said, the God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. God sent Jesus to be our Savior. So like Peter and the apostles, we'll want to say, we have to say, we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Since we are witnesses, since we know God's grace and love, since we, well, since we know our sin and know the forgiveness of sins that we have in Jesus. We want to and we need to go and tell the full message of this new life. We must obey God rather than men. We need to get that message out. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, it's obvious that the early Christians were thrilled with the message of this new life. Help us sinners also to be thrilled with the message of this new life. Then we also have to go and tell the full message of this new life. We may face opposition like the apostles did, but help us as we face that opposition to say, we must obey God rather than men. And then again, like the apostles, go and tell the full message of this new life. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.